very quick recap. I'm not going to go through last week's lectures again, but a very quick recap. We looked at the relationship that was among speed and density, flow and density, and speed and flow. And I did mention to you that there were a few traffic engineers, mathematicians that derived these models showing the relationship between speed, density, and flow. And we also highlighted, and of course, some of them were like green shield models, which we are basing our calculations on. There was another mathematician, Greenberg, and a few other green people that came up with these models showing the relationship between speed, flow, and density. And we did highlight that the relationship between speed and density, referring to the first glass, was a linear relationship, while the relationship between flow and density, and speed and flow, um, <clears throat> Uh, was quadratic. And you know from the formula you would have picked up V and V squared. Indicating to you, you all know. The quadratic equation. Plus BX plus you all know the quadratic equation. And solving of a quadratic equation. Hmm? minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Assume you all know that. Should be as a built-in function. So yes, we had a look at the relationship. And <clears throat> we spoke about the uh, basic formula that links speed, flow, and density, and that being v is equal to qd of V times D, Q is equal to V times D, V is your speed, D is your density, Q is your flow. And there you can see a typical speed density relationship, linear relationship. And where density is zero, that's where you would obtain maximum speed, mean free speed. <clears throat> and where your speed is zero, that's where you would obtain maximum density or jam density, DJ. And halfway, midway through, you can see where half your jam density occurs. That's where half your mean free speed occurs. <clears throat> so we highlighted that. And then we moved on to the basic formulae. And <clears throat> I trust that you all are now familiar with that. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to answer a question based on this. So you should know the formula now for time mean speed, which is the sum of your speed divided by your number of observations, number of vehicles. The space mean speed, that's over a distance. So it's the total distance traveled over the total time in the system. Your mean headway, your mean density, and The mean spacing, note the formula, mean headway, sum of your time of observation divided by a number of vehicles, mean density, a number of vehicles divided by the length of the test section. And also take note of the units. And in a question like this, the examiner will specify the units. So make sure that you are giving your final answer according to the units that the examiner requests mean spacing, your observation distance, test distance divided by the number of vehicles, and finally your flow rate Q, number of vehicles divided by your observation period. And then from there we went on to look at a typical example, and we looked at an example where you had a uniform section of a two-lane two-way road. You were given the test section 500 meters. You were given the observation period, six minutes and you observed eight vehicles over a 20 meter trap line and you observed the distance those or rather the time it took those eight vehicles to cross that 20 meter baseline the time in seconds recorded okay so obviously you have the time 
you have the distance 20 meter baseline, which you can then from there quite easily determine the speed. So that was a typical question given to you. And um, from there you were required to estimate the following parameters, namely the time mean speed and space mean speed, and note the examiner has specified in kilometers per hour, the mean headway is per lane, the mean spacing in meters per vehicle, and then finally your flow rate in vehicles per hour. So you need to take note of that. If you don't give your answers in those units, then obviously you're not going to get full marks. So from the information given, the baseline and the time, you could quite easily calculate the speed, which is distance over time, and you could have then calculated the speed of those eight vehicles. <clears throat> That's what you would have got as the speed, those eight vehicles. Okay, I'm doing a quick recap. We did this last week, so I'm not going to spend time on it again. From there, then you went on to calculate the time means speed, applying the formula, which is the sum of your speed. There's the sum of your speed divided by the number of vehicles, which eight vehicles. And the formula will give you your speed in meters per second. Question required you to convert to kilometers per hour giving you 68.992 kilometers per hour. Space mean speed, total distance traveled <clears throat> over the total time in the system. Total distance traveled, you had eight vehicles, 20 meter baseline, eight times 20 meters, the total distance. And the total time in the system, those times were given to you in the question. That would have given you in meters per second, converting to kilometers per hour. 68.490. So you can see this, the answers, your time means speed and your space means speed, final answers are very close. Obviously, if you ended up with an answer here of 80 some odd kilometers per hour, then you know you slipped up somewhere along the line and you need to go back to the drawing board. The mean headway, applying your formula, sum of time observation, so you observed over a six minute period, converting it to seconds, divided by the number of vehicles, eight, giving you your answer in seconds per vehicle, as required in the question. Mean density, your number of vehicles, eight, divided by the length of your test section, 500 meters is 0.5 kilometers, giving you your answer in vehicle per kilometers. Mean spacing, your observation distance, which was 500 meters, divided by the number of vehicles, eight, giving you a mean spacing in meters per vehicle. And then finally, your flow, which is the number of vehicles counted, in your case, eight, divided by observation period. The observation period was six minutes, converted to hours, divided by 60, hence giving you vehicles per hour. So <clears throat> that was the question that we did last week and then I gave you an exercise to do. <clears throat> and that was a simple exercise that I gave you to do. And also as part of your tutorial, you had to do the tutorial question from Moodle. If you went into Moodle, you would have picked up a similar question and you should have been able to walk through the question before checking your answers viewing the memorandum. So <clears throat> I gave you a simple question here taken from a previous uh, test and you had a time lapse camera and with the time lapse camera you took a snapshot of a stream of vehicles, namely six vehicles, you observed six vehicles and one second later you took a second photograph snapshot of that stream of vehicles and you observe that those six vehicles moved those distances in meters. So a time-lapse camera is one of the methods that you can determine space mean speed. So you take a snapshot of a stream of vehicles and x seconds later, one second, two seconds later, whatever, 
We take a snapshot of the stream of vehicles again. And from the photographs, there's gradations on the photographs, so you can work out or calculate the distance moved by each of those vehicles that you observed. In our case, we had six vehicles. And from there, you can quite easily then determine the space mean speed. You know the formula for space mean speed. So it was a simple three mark question. <clears throat> then to calculate your space mean speed, then it's total distance traveled divided by your total time in the system. So you had the distances given to you in the question. Total time in the system, although delta t was one second, you had six vehicles observed. So the total time in the system would be six vehicles multiplied by delta t, which is the one second interval. And that gave you a space mean speed of 20.75 meters per second, <clears throat> converting to kilometers per hour, 74.70 kilometers per hour. Again, note 74.700, which is 70. Just trying to specify your three decimals. So make sure you keep to three significant units or decimals. OK, so <clears throat> that was then. The question that you had to do from last week's presentation and then I trust that you all then went into Moodle. And pulled out a similar question, one of the tutorials, you would have picked up a question on Moodle and did the calculation. So if you did the calculation, and then compared your answers, then you should be in a good footing to do a mock test. There you have a mock test. You can see the reference on the top. So you were given a uniform section of a two lane, two way road. Test length of section was given to you 700 meters. Your observation period was given nine minutes and here you observed eight vehicles and in this case you had a 30 meter baseline and you recorded the time it took those vehicles to cross that 30 meter baseline in seconds so the values here is in seconds so similar to the previous example we looked at just a few values have been changed and once again, from the data given to you, you are required to estimate the time mean speed and space mean speed, kilometers per hour, mean headway in seconds per vehicle, mean density in vehicles per kilometer per lane, the mean spacing in meters per vehicle, and then finally the flow rate in vehicles per hour. 16 marks, straight, easy 16 marks if you know your calculations can't go wrong. So this is a quick mock test for you to do like right now. Allow you about 15 minutes should be adequate time. So please work through it like I've been mentioned in the past, like a stuck record. Do the calculations on your own. Get it wrong now, it's fine. Identify your mistake and you wouldn't make that mistake in the test of the exam. So don't wait for the final answer to be put up on the screen or look at the memorandum on Moodle. You're not achieving anything. Okay? So work it out on your own. So your 15 minutes starts now and then we will go through your solution. Go through the solution and you can check your answers.
We should be rounding off that question now. I'll give you a minute or two to finish it off. All right, I think that was sufficient time to complete the question. So you can get out your marking pens. Doesn't matter what color it is. Uh, mark your work and see how you fared in this uh, mock test. So firstly, then from the <clears throat> baseline given to you, 30 meters, the time in seconds given, you could quite easily compute the speed in meters per second. And that's the first thing that you have done, com computed the speed in meters per second for those eight vehicles. And then move on to solving the rest of the question. Time means speed, the sum of your speed. So the summation of that. Sum of your speed. Divided by the number of vehicles, eight vehicles. And that will give you your speed in meters per second. 24.819 meters per second. Question required you to display your speed in kilometers per hour. So converting to kilometers per hour, 89.349 kilometers per hour. Again, note accurate to three decimals. We look at the cover page of your test or your exam paper, you will see all calculations to three decimal places. And you can lose marks by not following that instruction. Space means speed, total distance traveled. So the distances were given to you in the question. Simply summation of that total distance traveled divided by the total time in the system. Total time in the system. So you had a 30 meter baseline, eight vehicles, uh, 30. So you got your total time in your system. Sorry, what am I saying? Your total time in your system is the summation of all the time. So if you go back to the question, summation of all your time, okay? And the distance, total distance traveled, well, you had a 30 meter baseline, eight vehicles over a 30 meter baseline. So it's eight times 30 will give you a total distance traveled divided by a summation of the time of each vehicle. So summing that up and that's in meters, that's in seconds. So that would have given you an answer in meters per second, 24.565 meters per second converted to kilometers per hour, 88.43. And again, you can see 
uh, very close uh, the values time means speed and space means speed. Then moving on to question two, and that was your mean headway. Your mean headway is the <clears throat> sum of the time of observation. So you observed over a nine minute period, converted to seconds, multiplied by 60, divided by a number of vehicles, eight, and that will give you an answer in seconds per vehicle. You should get an answer of 67.500 seconds per vehicle. Mean density, number of vehicles divided by the length of your test section, eight vehicles. Length of your test section was 700 meters, which is 0 0.7 kilometers. You want your answer in vehicles per kilometer. And that gives you a mean density of 11.429 vehicles per kilometer per lane. Mean spacing, the observation distance, which was 700 meters, divided by the number of vehicles, eight, uh, giving you a spacing, mean spacing of 87.5 meters per vehicle. And then finally, your flow rate, Q, your vehicles counted, you had eight vehicles over your observation period. Your observation period was nine minutes, converted to hours. You want your answer in vehicles per hour. And that gave you 53.333 vehicles per hour. Easy 16 marks. Let's see quickly by show of hands how many of you cracked that problem. How many of you cracked that problem? Show of hands. Hmm? None of you? All right, at least you're honest. So now you should be able to do one on your own quite easily. Oh, so we did have one. OK, great. So then let's <coughs> move on. And we spoke about the flow speed density relationship. I uh, gave spoke about a few traffic engineers, mathematicians that derived various models. And here you can see typically green shield model. The basic relationship between speed flow and density. Flow is equal to speed times density. And there you have the three main equations that you should know. So you need to check the standard data sheet that's posted on Moodle. If these formula are not given, then you need to know it. If it's there on the data sheet, then good luck. You don't have to remember it. And you will see how the question is phrased. Sometimes the question is phrased giving you one or two of the formula. formula. So you can see the first one that deals with the speed density relationship. And the speed density relationship is a linear relationship. Second one that deals with the flow density relationship, and you can see V squared, so quadratic, and take note of the three graphs that I referred to you at the beginning of this lecture. Okay. And then finally, the third one, which is the flow density relationship, and again, D squared, so you can see a quadratic. So having noted the basic relationship and those three formulas that relate speed and density, flow and density, and uh, flow and density, and flow and speed, then you should be able to handle a question on that. And we will then look at a typical example. There you have a typical question where you have a two lane, two way road bridge with no overtaking allowed, and the bridge is 600 meters long and you observe the traffic flow by aerial photography and you observe that a vehicle breakdown breaks down just before leaving the bridge so at the edge of the bridge at the end of the bridge which has resulted in a queuing of vehicles on the bridge you counted some 60 vehicles queued on the bridge stationary vehicles so from there you know stationary vehicles you can quite easily determine jam density, DJ, number of stationary vehicles. And then having cleared the vehicle, the traffic then starts moving again, and then you observed five vehicles, and you observed that the following vehicles, the vehicles traveled the following distances, five vehicles from 
one photograph to the next. And from the gradation, you observe that the uh, vehicles travel those following distances. So from that information, then what are you required to calculate? So from the information given, you can see that the examiner was quite lenient enough to give you the speed density, the basic relationship and the linear relationship between speed and density. So obviously that tells you that you need to know the other two quadratic equations if not given on the data sheet and next year A. So you are then required from there to estimate or calculate the mean free speed for the traffic in kilometers per hour. The maximum flow rate, Q max, mean free speed, meaning VF, mean free speed, maximum speed. And then finally, the speeds that you likely to obtain given a flow rate of 1200 vehicles per hour. So what's the speed likely to obtain? You can see the question says speeds likely to obtain when the flow rate is 1200 vehicles per hour. And your answer for your speed in kilometers per hour. OK, solution. Step one, you want to calculate the space mean speed first. Space means speed, so space mean speed is given by a total distance traveled, which was given to you in the question, divided by the total time in the system. So the photograph was one second interval. So although one second interval, you observed five vehicles, so it's five times one, gives you a total time in your system. So that's in meters, that's in seconds, giving you an answer in 21.3 meters per second. Converted to kilometers per hour, 76.68. So, worked out the speed, the density is given by your number of vehicles. So, you observed five vehicles of the length of your test section, which was 600 meters or 0 0.6 kilometers. You want your answer in vehicles per kilometer. That gives you 8.333 vehicles per kilometer per lane. So that stream of traffic that you observe, those five vehicles, you've worked out what the average speed is, the space means speed, and you've worked out what the density is. So you can now work out the flow of that stream of traffic that you observe, those five vehicles, which is from the basic formula, flow is speed times density. You worked out the speed to be 76.68, density to be 8.333 and that gives you a flow of 638.974 vehicles per hour. Now you want to find what is the mean free speed, meaning the maximum speed, VF. So jam density you can quite easily work out since you know the number of stationary vehicles over that Test section question gave you the number of stationary vehicles 60 over the test section was 600 meters. So jam density will quite easily from there be calculated. 60 vehicles over the test section was 0.6 kilometers. You want your answer in vehicles per kilometer. So you know your jam density DJ is 100 vehicles per kilometer. So from the information that you have calculated, that now gives you two points on your speed density curve. You all know your speed density curve is a linear relationship. Go back to the first diagram that I showed you, the linear relationship. So that if you have two points on, the, on, on any curve, on a grade, you can then quite easily determine the gradient. So what are the two points? So the gradient, if we take our gradient, the relationship of our mean free speed and our jam density. When we had a speed of 76.68, 76.68, we had a density of 8.333. Okay, so there's my 76.68 when we had 
A space mean speed of 76.68. The density was 8.333. When my speed was zero, when my speed was zero, that's when I achieved maximum number of vehicles in a queue. That is jam density DJ. And I calculated my DJ to be 100. So this is how we arrive at the values, two points on the curve that we're referring to. And that gives us a gradient of the curve as minus 0 0.837. That minus sign simply denotes the, the, the curve, whether it's from left to right or right to left. So if it's from left to right, then it indicates a negative. From right to left, it indicates a positive. But that's not really important. Important is the value, 0 0.837. 837. That is important. The gradient 0 0.837. So we know that the jam density is 100. So from VF over DJ equal to 0 0.837, we can find VF. VF is simply DJ multiplied by 0 0.837, which is what you have there. DJ, which is 100, multiplied by your gradient, 0 0.837, gives you your maximum free speed, 83.7 kilometers per hour. 83.7 kilometers per hour. Okay. So you solve the first part of the question. Second part of the question is to calculate your maximum flow, Q max. Now, if you go back to your speed flow graph, and your speed flow graph and speed density graph, you will see that your maximum flow Q max occurs at half your jam density and at half your free mean speed. That is DJ over two and VF over two. And we all know flow is speed times density. So Q max then will simply be half the jam density multiplied by half the free mean speed calculated your jam density, you've calculated the first part of the question, your free speed VF, and that gives you a maximum flow rate of 2092.5 vehicles per hour. Okay. You need to interrogate this example after this lecture, get more familiar with it. And then finally, the last part of the third part of the question was to calculate the speed given a flow rate of 1200 vehicles per hour. You're given flow rate of 1200 vehicles per hour. So you go back now and check your flow speed relationship equation. Highlighted it. The flow speed relationship equation. Flow is equal to DJV multiplied by DJ over VF brackets times V squared. So you have a quadratic equation for the flow rate of 1200. So there's your 1200. DJ, you know, was 100. DJ over VF, you have worked that out. And so you can see from here, you have a quadratic equation solving for V. So bringing V squared onto this side, there you've got V squared, V. So you all know how to solve that minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 ac all over 2 a so you all know solving of a quadratic equation and you're solving for v so remember you have plus and minus so firstly taking plus those values secondly minus those values will give you two values for v so you can see from the v is either 69.163 kilometers per hour or 14.519 kilometers per hour. So if you go back to the graph that I showed you, the uh, speed flow graph. So let's say you had a speed here of 1200. So if you read up 1200, it cuts the speed graph there and up there. That's how you arrive at those two values there, V1 there, and V2 there, lower value and a higher value. So that's how you arrived at those two values.
Okay, so. Let's get back to our question. So that's a question that you have worked on. So you need to, like I said, after this lecture, go and interrogate the calculations, do the calculations on your own, walk through this example again on your own. We are now gone into your tutorial period. Like I said previously, the tutorial period is not a free period. Firstly, you will interrogate. You will, this is recorded, so you can retrieve the recording, look at this example again, go through it again, and then log on to Moodle. You will definitely find tutorial questions on split flow density relationships. Walk through them out on your own first before looking at the answers. That's what you are required to do now for the tutorial period, the second period. So firstly, go through this example again, check out the values, check out do the calculations on your own. Check that you're arriving at these expected answers. Then log on to Moodle and tackle the tutorial relating to speed flow density that's on posted on Moodle. Okay? So that's what you require to do for this second period, the tutorial period. So before I close the lecture, you all should have received an email from me regarding your test one. Your test one is confirmed. So it's on this coming Tuesday. So the next time we meet, we meet in person on campus, drawing lab. Try and be there around 10. The test is from 10.30 to 11.30. It's not a long test, a one hour test. So be there a little early so you can be seated. and Start the test promptly at 10.30. I did send you an email previously regarding the scope of the test, so you're all familiar. Like I said, it only covers the first two modules, transportation planning and transportation systems. So therefore, I did say to you at the last lecture, even if you break a leg, it's still worth your while wheeling yourself to the venue and writing the schedule test. Why? Firstly, the schedule test pass rate has always been above 80%. Special test, we all know you can submit a doctor's certificate. Any spaza shop will give you a doctor's certificate. And then you're entitled for the special test. But bear in mind, the special test then is written towards the end of the semester when you're under pressure writing your final exam or your major control test. And it will cover the whole syllabus. And the average pass rate in the special test over the, over the years is in the region of 5 to 10%. So you don't have to be a rocket scientist to do the math. So, and again, I want to specify, I mentioned it in my email also to you, that you are given sufficient time to abide by DUT management rules in terms of the COVID-19 rules in terms of access to campus. You had ample time. It's, this is, instruction is not coming from me. It's from DUT management in terms of their COVID-19 vaccine policy. So you should have by now your permit or your COVID-19 accredited uh, student card to access campus. So on the day of the test, please don't send me an email that you are not allowed on campus because you did not satisfy that requirement. Unfortunately, I'll have to allocate zero for you. So again, I'm saying to you that this is not my instructions. This is from DUT management, the COVID-19 task team and DUT management. So please, you are given sufficient time, enough warning, enough information pertaining to this to meet the proper requirements to access campus. So don't lose out. Okay? So having said that, then you can now uh, uh, view the recording, go through the, this calculation again, get familiar with the calculation, and then log on to Moodle and look at additional questions posted on Moodle on flow density speed relationship. All right, I think I've said enough for today, so good luck. Do your revision for your test and 
we will meet then on Tuesday. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.